The single biggest mistake people make in trying to break generational trauma is that they try to break generational trauma. Now I know you're looking at me thinking, what the fuck's coming out of his pie hole this time? <laughs> it's simply this. Generational trauma, just real simply, is the shit that I pass down to my kids of my, my own shit that I, affects how I raise them and thus affects how they think of themselves and how they look at the world and how they look at relationships and how they go out into the world and interact in life. And it comes from my shit, my own beliefs about myself and what the crap was that I was passed down, was passed down to me from generations older than me. And it goes generation, 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 unless you break that fucking cycle. But the mistake people make is that they try to break the cycle. And what I mean by that is they, change, they say, I'm gonna parent differently, right? We, we, we've, we've all said it. Or so many people have said, I'm gonna parent differently, fuck that shit. I'm gonna do it differently than my parents did it. Really? See, the problem is, if you try to change your behaviors and how you parent your kids and think that's breaking generational uh, cycles and generational patterns, it doesn't. You wanna know why? Because trying to change behaviors, as you've heard me say in other videos on other subjects and even on this subject, trying to change behaviors long-term never changes behaviors. You have to change the core beliefs driving the behaviors. And I don't mean just the parenting principles. I mean the beliefs about self, about life. Now, to unpack that very briefly, simply this. So many people say, well, I'm going to parent differently. And so they go about interacting with their kids differently. However, there are so many ways that the trauma that was done to you, it goes down, it affects your beliefs about yourself, and it comes out in ways that you may not be trying to control. See, in your parenting, you may be being very deliberate in your interactions with your child. But, for instance, what about your interactions with yourself? What about your self-talk? I had a friend recently who said, Sven, you know, uh, my mom's whole self-talk to herself about her weight and about her looks, it was constantly coming out. She never had a good word about herself. And I saw that my whole life and I heard that my whole life. And guess what, Sven? I never have a good word about myself. I'm so fucking insecure about myself. I so loathe how I look, Sven. And this is a beautiful woman by any standard, right? It's just like, but she thinks she's ugly. She thinks she's too this, not enough that because she was that self-talk was modeled for her by her mother, who by other standards was a good mom. But the child is watching. So it's how you interact with yourself. A second way that I see people uh, uh, not break generational trauma, where the beliefs break out in other actions that they may not be monitoring. You may be monitoring your interactions with your kid, but there may be things that you're missing in other areas. For instance, I have so many people say, well, I'm gonna do the opposite of what my parents did, as if that's the solution. I, I have I've had many clients, uh, but I, I think of one in particular a long time ago, and he would say, you know what, Sven? I decided that I was gonna parent my kids differently because my old man never showed affection. Never showed affection. And so I decided I'm gonna just fucking always make sure my kids get affection. So he'd fucking hug his kids, literally, every time they walked into a room. He would either hug them or he'd go touch them, put his arm around them, and, and constant, constant, to the point when the kids got to be 10 or 11 or 12, it's like, fuck dad, Jesus fucking, jeez, just fuck dad, that's enough, okay? Where it was too much, it was overdone. And the children, ironically, became disaffectionate because there was so much affection. In other words, he had swung the pendulum the exact opposite direction and was basically causing the kids to not want affection because he thought he needed to give them more affection or any affection and he gave too much, right? The old do the opposite thing. There's another way. And so that's, uh, that's one, another example of you maybe trying to change behaviors thinking that doing the opposite is better, but it's not. There's another way, and, and there's so many different ways that you're not breaking generational trauma, even though in generational patterns, generational cycles, even though you think you are. Another one is the messaging you're teaching your children about life. I've had so many clients over the years who got messages from their parents, and many of them are parents, and they see themselves doing it with their own kids after we get to talking. And I drill down into their behaviors, and it's the messages about life. For instance, one I hear a lot is, well, be careful, be careful, be careful. And the parent thinks they're doing the child a favor by saying, be careful, but what you're breeding is fear. Fear, be careful, be careful. I had a, I had a client who every time she went out the door, 
in the morning. Mom was always, be careful out there, breeding fear to the point where um, <laughs> I personally, in my own parenting, I change it to take your time. Take your time. In other words, go at your own speed. Not necessarily be careful. A child will naturally uh, uh, adjust and adapt to a situation. But as long as they're given permission to go at their own time, they're being taught to trust their instincts rather than always live in fear. I had one example of a coach, NCAA Division I coach that I was coaching many years ago. And we were able to establish that he, his team that season churned out more pro uh, players into the pros than any other time in the history of his program. And yet they didn't even make it to the national championship. And we were able to trace to when it happened that they lost it and where that loss tracked back to one critical decision midway through the season. One key decision where he didn't trust his own instincts and we were able to track that all the way back to a message he had been getting since childhood. And the message was, are you sure? Are you sure? And because of that message being so embedded deep down in his beliefs, to always question himself, which can actually be a good thing, but he had taken it to such a level, it had been so ingrained in him, that when it came to one critical decision midway through the season, he didn't trust himself. His instincts were saying, do this, and instead he did this. And it was the key mistake that cost them the national championship. So the messaging about life, the interactions you're having with yourself, deciding to just do the opposite. There are so many ways that generational trauma infects parenting, even when we're not parenting, even when we think or even when we think we're not parenting, or even when we think we're doing everything else right. So how do you break generational trauma? You have to heal yourself. You have to go down to the core beliefs, the pain and the fears that you inherited from the generation above you. And, but most critically, the core beliefs that you were taught about yourself and taught about life. And that's only done by deep work. That's not done by changing behaviors because those core beliefs will infect so many areas that you can't see if you're just focused on behaviors. But once you go and start to change those core beliefs, and how do you do it? I wrote a fucking a whole book on this. There's a hole in my love cup. That's how. For those of you that are saying, but how? Go to that fucking book, do all the fucking journal, and use these fucking TikToks. But you have to go down to those core beliefs and identify the core beliefs that you were taught about yourself and taught about life. And that's a process, it doesn't have to take forever. But once you identify those, then you begin to become more aware of the tentacles of that virus in the operating system that is your fucking person. You begin to become more and more aware of, oh shit, I'm doing this over here. Things start to come out of your mouth that you've always been doing. It's like, fuck, I can't believe I'm doing that. I gotta stop that. Okay, that's deliberate parenting. That's changing more than just the behaviors. That's changing the core beliefs and that shifts everything up in the realm of behaviors. But if you're just focused on, oh, I'm gonna do things differently, you're gonna completely miss the boat. And I guarantee you are still carrying the generational trauma into the next generation. So at what point do you go deep and really begin to examine who you are and what you've been taught about yourself and about life? Do you got the guts? Because this is the scary shit of life. Have a kick ass day. I had to spank a few young dudes the other day. I was out for cocktails with friends and I was walking through the bar area to use the bathroom. I could tell this table of six guys was looking at me, young guys, like 25, whatever. And I went to the bathroom, I came out and they stopped me and they said, oh, hey, you're badass counseling, aren't you? You're that Sven dude, we listened to you. I said, yeah, well, clear fucking lapse of judgment on your part. Anyway, they said, you know, so fucking talk to us, man. Give us some advice. I said, I, you know, I'd love to, I'm here with friends, but also you don't want to hear my fucking advice. They're like, no, no, come on. I'm like, fellas, you know, I, you, you don't want to hear from me. You listen to me all the time. They're like, no, no, give us something. Like on dating or something. And then one guy said, there's a girl over there. I'm thinking you know, I should go talk to, but I'm afraid. And it, I don't know, it doesn't really feel right, but I, you know, she's so beautiful and shit like that. And I said, in all honesty, fellas, fine. You want to hear something? Fine. If you have to force yourself to walk up and talk to a girl, don't. If you have to force yourself, push yourself, like cajole yourself and really pump yourself up to really get the courage to go address a girl, don't. You want to know why? Because you're forcing it. You're forcing it. And forced action rarely, if ever, leads to good results. See, the difference between good anxiety and bad anxiety, and forcing action comes from a place of bad anxiety. It comes from a place of anxiety rather than from a place of calm and inspired action. And the difference between forced anxiety and good anxiety is... The difference between doing something because you think you should or because others are telling you you have to or because you're afraid of the consequences if you don't. And good anxiety is just like, 
you're starting a new business and yeah there's shit you're worried about but I'm really excited or you're on that roller coaster and you love your roller coasters and it's the big one and you're riding that first hill up and you're nervous as hell you're white knuckling it but it's also exciting you want to be there so many times when I was younger I had a woman I would want to approach or a girl I would want to approach and I'd have to work myself up into a fucking lather just to fucking go over and talk to her I was forcing it and what changed everything for me was when I could let go of the very thing I wanted most. I just said, you know what? If it's creating anxiety, anxiety in me, I'm gonna let it go. It doesn't feel right. I want to, I trust that it will happen naturally. And maybe I'll feel like walking up somebody and talking to them or putting out a, you know, a, a profile online or whatever, and it'll feel good versus it'll feel forced and I don't like it and I don't want it. It doesn't feel right. Or, and so that's the difference forced action versus inspired action and if you're starting a relationship based on forced action that does not bode well for the future of that relationship if you're doing it because oh I should I should and I'm afraid if I don't and what do the guys think or God I really need someone I want someone to love me I need someone to like me you're, you're doing that shit for the all wrong reasons and very often when we're forcing it it's because we want that love we want love from something external for from us because we're lacking something internal we don't love ourselves more often than not so I have to go get it, I gotta get it, I gotta get it, I can't live without it. Versus inspired action comes from the place of, I'm fine without it. Do I want love? Do I want a woman in my life? Of course I do. And I'm okay until it comes, if it comes. I just trust that it's working out fine. And when I feel inspired to talk to someone, maybe I just happen to be fucking in the fucking produce aisle getting some limes for gin and tonics this weekend, and there's a young woman there and I say hello if I'm a young guy or whatever it might be where it's inspired action versus forced action. And I got a little tip for you. If it's true in dating, it's true in your fucking business, it's true in your work career, it's true in your relationships, when it's inspired action, it feels right. It comes from a place of calm and it creates a place, place of either calm or exuberance. If it comes from anxiety and or creates anxiety, it's not you. Inspired action is your authentic self. Forced action is the version of you that's compensating for your fears of being alone. And what happens when you're alone, all those voices, all that shit you were taught about yourself comes rising up to the surface. Fear of being alone or some other fear or fears of your own inadequacy that you were taught about yourself. So the question is, are you engaged in forced action or inspired action? And yes, it even applies to shit so seemingly trivial, yet so significant as approaching a woman or if you're a woman approaching a guy or whatever. So you got the balls to finally stop forcing action and going after something because I got to have it and to trust, to open up your hand and trust that when it's right, it'll feel right. Have a kick-ass day. What reality was forced on you that was never true to begin with? and Who forced it on you? More often than not, it's a parent or whoever raised you, but you were forced to believe a family narrative, a family story in which there were villains, there were heroes, and in all likelihood, you were one of the villains. If you're in a depression or an anxiety or long-term internal pain, you were one of the villains, you were one of the bad guys, or you were belittled. You were taught to believe things, not just about the family, but about yourself that were never fucking truth. And as I tell clients all the time, I got bad news for you. <laughs> bad news for your belief of that myth, and that is when you came out of the womb, like every other child that comes out of the womb, you didn't come out of the womb hating yourself. No child comes out of the womb thinking, oh, gee, I suck, I'm no good. No, that means that somewhere between the womb and right now, you were taught to hate yourself. You were taught a fucking lie. You were taught that you're the problem. You were taught that it's your fault. You were taught that you're not okay. You're not worthy of love. You don't deserve anything. You don't matter. You were taught that. And it's the family narrative that conveys that. So many people come to me and say, Sven, you talk about you know, the necessity for changing belief, or changing our core beliefs. And how do I identify my core beliefs, Sven? And I talk about that in my book, in my last book, and then we also go into that in, in counseling. But one of the things uh, that changes the core belief most quickly is when we go down, I ask people, what was your family narrative? Tell me the rough sketch of your family. Okay, now let's just invert that. Just for fun, let's invert that. Let's say that the parent that was always the hero wasn't really the hero. Let's pretend that the parent that was the monster, there was actually a worse monster. And so the question becomes, what were the stories that you were taught? And see, there's another side of it. Because, well, first of all, what were the stories that you were taught? Because those stories aren't just the sort of uh, story arc of your life, but they taught you 
underlying messages about yourself. Now we're really getting fucking deep. So if a child comes to a parent and says, you know, we're experiencing this, or gee, I'm, I'm having to take care of, you know, my dad, mom, please help out, or dad, I'm having to, you know, run, run this family because you're always gone and, and, you know, mom's a drunk or whatever it might be. And the parent denies that reality and says, no, no, it's not bad. Or maybe you grew up in a home where we put on a face, right? You put on the charm to the outside world, everything's fine, but inside the four walls of this fucking house is fucking chaos, or it's a shit show, it's or abuse or whatever, right? You're taught by the parents to put on the false version, or maybe you're even taught that the negative stuff doesn't even fucking exist. So in other words, the underlying message that's being conveyed to the child is what your experience is, your voice, your intuition, your gut, uh, your narrative as you see it isn't true. And so the underlying message is your voice doesn't matter. Who you are, what you believe, what you see doesn't matter. And so this conflict arises inside the child from this voice coming up from the soul and the reality as they're experiencing it, what their own inner voice is saying, and then the reality that's being shoved down their throat like a mother robin shoves a worm down its baby's throat. You know, and so these two realities are meeting and that grating, that anxiety, that depression, that angst and all the other stuff, it's the grating of those two tectonic plates below the surface causing earthquakes in your life. It's your truth versus the truth you've been forced to swallow. So what is the reality that was forced on you? Is it possible it was never fucking true to begin with? And at what point do you stop distracting yourself, self-medicating, running? from your fucking promise, staying just one step ahead of that tidal wave of all your real feelings that you boxed up years ago, decades ago. And at what point do you open up the box and have the courage to finally face the truth of what you really felt, the truth of what was really happening in your family and in your past. And at that point, begin to see, holy shit, I was taught to believe this when that was never true. It's actually this. And when our core beliefs change, when we begin to see the truth, everything changes. And transformation can be immediate if you go deep enough. So, you got the balls to finally fucking face that shit? Have a kick-ass day.